You're listening to Alternative Investor Mastermind, where we do a deep dive on alternative investment opportunities and the lifestyle it can create. Join Jack Krupe as he presents actionable tips and tricks in doing passive real estate away from mainstream strategies. Go beyond the usual fix and flips and try less explored yet rewarding investing ventures from multifamily properties, mobile homes to cryptocurrencies. Do not miss this opportunity to escape traditional assets and finally create wealth without Wall Street. Now your host, Jack. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Alternative Investor Mastermind. Uh, today is going to be kind of a unique episode. If, uh, if you followed my uh, social media over the last uh, few weeks, uh, you'll know that uh, I uh, spent about three weeks in Las Vegas, uh, kind of a working vacation. I was certainly uh, not unplugged. I was taking calls, uh, um, you know, texting, chatting, emailing, jumping on calls. But uh, primarily I was out there to uh, hang out during the uh, World Series of Poker. Um, I ended up uh, playing the main event, uh, which is a tournament that I've uh, been watching for over 20 years, and it's uh, it's been, been a bucket list item of mine to uh, to play. So uh, there's a lot of other tournaments. I think there's over 80 tournaments during the you know the entirety of the World Series, which lasts almost six weeks, and uh, also just a lot of other uh, you know cash games that you could play anytime anytime you want, and uh, thousands of poker players fly in. Um, it was kind of a cool reunion as well. Um, I actually ran into some people from Rochester that uh, you know I met 20 years ago when, when uh, you know first started playing poker, and as well as some people from New York City uh, from my time in, uh, in Manhattan that uh, you know I played at uh, either in Atlantic City or some of the private games uh, in in New York. So um, <clears throat> kind of mixed thoughts. Uh, I have mixed thoughts on, on putting this podcast out as uh, you know as a fund manager. Um, you know, it's it's kind of tricky to to have kind of a discussion about uh, about gambling, uh, but uh, you know, I think uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, you know a the social media feedback was good, and I, I know you know a fair amount of uh, you know of our investors actually you know have dabbled in poker and, and, and understand that it's not uh, you know it's it's uh, it's a game of you know there's still some luck involved, but it's certainly a game of skill. It's a game that there's a lot of professionals and. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot to the game, and and frankly, there's a, there's a fair amount of uh, of uh, you know synergies with with business uh, as well, business and investing. Um, you know, first off, um, you know the strategy, the analysis. Uh, you know, you need to kind of analyze. You know, in poker, you analyze your hand, analyze your odds, um, anticipate uh, your opponent's uh, moves or actions. And you know, in real estate, you're analyzing properties, you're considering market conditions, you're considering the seller's motivations, and and uh, you know, there, there there definitely are some uh, some parallels. So. Um, you know, having a, a solid strategy is is often the difference between success and uh, and, and failure, and and that's uh, that's similar in poker and similar in investing. Uh, diversifying your portfolio, um, that which is similar to varying your play, not doing the same thing every time. Uh, timing the market, picking your picking your spots, uh, somewhat uh, like the analogy, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Uh, risk management, which is obviously uh, very, very important in, in investing and um, also, you know, very much so in, in poker, especially in tournaments, uh, you need to be conscious of your, your bankroll and how many chips you have, how many chips your opponent has, uh, you know, and, and when, to, when to take a stand and when to, uh, when to stay out of trouble. Um, and actually, the, the, uh, the guy who won the, the main event uh, that the, you won uh, almost $10 million, um, had a famous hand where he folded pocket queens. Um, I think where there was maybe 10 or 11 people left and it was, it was pretty close to combining the, the final nine and pocket queens is a very strong hand. And, and generally the math says, you know, you should be re-raising or, or, or probably playing for all your chips at that point. Uh, but you know, he looked at the, the payout bumps and, uh, you know, how many chips he had at the time. And uh, you know, made a decision to just fold that hand and not uh, not get involved. And um, you know, he had enough chips that you know he felt other people would eliminate, and he would get himself to the final table. And ultimately, he ended up uh, winning the entire tournament. Uh, emotional control. Um, you know, in in poker, um, you know, there's almost every session you play, there's going to be you know a tough decision or a bad beat or, or, or something that. Uh, 
you know, can will set many players off. And, uh, you know, just being able to, to keep control of your emotions, stay logical, stay analytical, and, and, and just think through your, your decisions is, is, is paramount. And, you know, certainly we, we've seen over the last few years, uh, there's been a lot of challenges in real estate with interest rates uh, rising uh, so significantly. So, um, you know, being able to you know, stay calm and collected and make rational decisions um, has, has been very helpful. Um, that also includes, uh, you know, staying in the market and not getting getting scared off. Um, you know, investments made uh, in 2021, early 2022, almost across the board have uh, struggled or and have some headwinds. You know, certainly um, those with long term fixed rate debt are, are a little bit more shielded. Um, you know, certain asset classes outside of multifamily, you know, been a little bit shielded. But yeah, there's there's a lot of deals that have had. Uh, some challenges over the last uh, one to two years and, you know, having the, you know, wherewithal to stay disciplined, emotionally composed and, and make data driven decisions has been very helpful because some of the best deals we've seen over the last 10 years that have come up in the last uh, six months, including, uh, you know, a deal that's uh, on our plate right now that's, um, you know, probably the highest cap rate I've seen in the major market in, uh, you know, in the last 10 years. Uh, learning from failure, um, you know, in poker, you're going to make mistakes in, in, in every session. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, immediately, sometimes, uh, somebody shows a bluff, uh, and you know, right away, sometimes you're, you're, you're just not even sure if it's a, a mistake or not, but you know, ultimately you look at your, your wins and losses and how much, how much money you've made over time and, and, uh, you know, analyze where you may be, um, failing and, um, Real estate and investing is is no different. Um, you know, I look back over the last couple of years, and uh, you know, certainly wish that all I did was fixed rate deals with ten year terms. If that were the case, I'd be um, you know much more relaxed right now, and um, you know, have uh, really no no major issues at all. It'd be kind of boring, actually. Um, you know, which in, the, in this case would be would be good. But um, you know, certainly over the last few years, I've learned a number of lessons on on uh, you know how much the debt markets can move and how important uh, they are. Uh, also, um, you know, learned lessons and had a number of reinforcements on our overall core thesis of you know, investing with very established operators, um, largely over close to fifty deals. And we're probably going to do a podcast specifically outlining sort of some of the lessons we've learned across over 50 investments. But yeah, you know, the investments that have had the most challenges have generally been with operating groups that, um, you know, are undercapitalized, um, you know, got together and sort of, you know, brought together a number of small investors. And, and those of those of, you know, the ones that have had the most challenges, um, you know, and there's two deals in particular uh, that I think of uh, were, were in that scenario. Whereas, uh, you know, the deals that have had challenges and, and have, you know, ultimately navigated them very well, um, you know, are deals, uh, again, with very experienced sponsors, but also with deeper pockets. Um, you know, in, in one scenario, the actual operator himself infused a few million dollars into the property. Um, in another few scenarios, there was a large anchor investor. So when they needed to raise five to six million dollars for to five of it was coming from the one big check writer, uh, as opposed to trying to raise 50 or hundred thousand from 50 different investors. So, um, you know, just being able to, you know, learn from our, our mistakes and that's really in, informed how we're investing going forward, which is really focusing on, on, you know, those core operators that are, that are very well funded and can, you know, have proven they can adapt. And, um, actually brings me to my last point is, is adaptability. Um, you need to vary your strategy. I, I played uh, three days in a row um, at the main event, and um, you know the game changes uh, over the course of the first few days. The first day is kind of very slow. Um, you have a lot of chips compared to the blinds. People are generally playing very conservative for the most part. Uh, but then day two, you draw a new table, and uh, you know the blinds start going up, the ante start going up. Um, you know, the play can get a little more aggressive. There's a little bit more raising and stealing of the blinds. And eventually towards the end of the day, you know, some people are getting short on chips and are going all in, trying to double up, or in some cases, they're just trying to, to bluff and, and steal, steal some blinds and antes to stay alive. Um, and, you know, you got to play a lot differently 
uh, at that stage of the tournament than in the early stage of the tournament. And, um, you know, in, investing in business, you, you, you need to be continually adapting. I've been in this for over over 20 years at this point and have done most of the major strategies from, you know, working with small single family houses to, to large apartment buildings uh, in the middle, buying a lot of distressed debt. Um, and, you know, that was an industry that in the 2009 to 2011, you know, you could be kind of a mom and pop group and, and you could still be a mom and pop group, but that business really transitioned and institutionalized over five to 10 years. And it got a um, little bit more difficult for the small guys to get involved and you had to make a decision to go big or stay really small. Um, and, uh, you know, we chose to go big and it worked out uh, you know, pretty well overall, but eventually realized it just wasn't, um, wasn't a good lifestyle for me. And I wanted to refocus on, uh, you know, an investing strategy that gave me freedom and flexibility. And, uh, you know, even that since 2020, you know, it was adapt, uh, you know, needed to adapt a few different times from, you know, a really, really hot market that was super competitive that, uh, you know, properties were, you know, we, people were doubling their money in a year, including us to, you know, probably the most challenging time in the last 10, 15 years in multifamily, um, you know, to, to now also looking at new, new and unique asset classes. I mean, we've, we've got a great investment in, in a marina strategy, marinas and RV parks that, uh, have much higher cap rates, almost 10, 10 cap rate entry. So, um, you know, we're adapting, we're still, you know, we're still investing in multifamily, but we're invested in other strategies, uh, as well. So, um, yeah, so I, th I think this is, uh, pretty much it for, for this episode. Um, you know, hope, hope, uh, you found it, uh, interesting here, a little bit of the, the poker stories. Uh, if there's interest, I could do a deeper dive into the actual kind of inner workings of poker and some of the hands and some of the strategy. That's, uh, not sure if that's, uh, kind of too niche or not, but, uh, you know, we'll see what I feel like. And, uh, ultimately, you know, trying to put out a lot of content and, you know, keep it personal and, uh, just really, you know, talking about, uh, you know, kind of narrating our, our investment life and, and some of the cool things I'm doing. So. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. Reach out uh, to us on all major social media, JCAM Investments, uh, as well as myself, Jack Krupe, personally on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, LinkedIn. And uh, we'll uh, see you in the next episode. That's all for this episode of Alternative Investor Mastermind. Now that you know the many alternative opportunities out there all up for the taking, you can finally become ultra-connected and ultra-wealthy. Get more valuable advice from the experts by subscribing to the show at alternativeinvestormastermind.com. Become a winner in the world of passive investing today in alternative investment strategies. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.